everyone, I'd like to call the meeting for November 17th, 2020 um, in order. Um, I'm going to start off with our Indigenous recognition. So it, we are acknowledging that we are meeting on the traditional land of the Saugeen Ojibwe Nation, which is represented by the communities of Saugeen First Nation, Nation and Chippewas of Nawash Unceded First Nation. We also think of the Métis Nation of Ontario, whose history and people are well represented in Bruce and Gray counties. And then I'm going for approval of the agenda that the regular meeting of the board of November 17, 2020 be approved as printed. Can I have a mover? Thank you, Trustee McComb. Uh, second, um, Trustee Dawson. Um, all in favor and opposed and carried. Now I'm going to do the moment of... Yes. You don't have... I'm not there. I see the moose. I see you for um, Trustee Morgan and the Moose. <laughs> so it's being fixed. Okay, no, and what is this? It is his thing is turning the wrong way. Sebastian. Is his first name Sebastian? Sebastian, can you um, just change your sign? Wall, trust, student trustee wall, and you had your ham up, hand up. I'm gonna let him get over there. Uh, yes, yes, uh, yes, I did. Um, can I just ask for clarification? It was my understanding that I would be giving the uh, student senate report. Is that the school update at the bottom? Yes. Yes. Thank you for clarifying. Thank you. It's C1A. So when the student senate report for information, I'll make sure to call you on you to do the report, okay? Excellent. So now I'm going to do the moment of reflection. I want to start by acknowledging the many creative remembrance day tributes by our schools last week. COVID-19 restrictions did not hamper the efforts of our students and staff in honoring the brave Canadians who have sacrificed for our freedom and to promote peace. For those who may not be aware, Sunday was National Indigenous Veterans Day to commemorate the contributions of our Indigenous citizens to Canada's military service. It was also treaty Recognition Week as schools focus their learning on the history of treaties in Ontario. This week we turn our attention to Bullying Awareness and Prevention Week. We think about our individual and collective responsibilities as trustees, staff, students and families to uphold our strategic priority of a safe supported, supportive learning community. For our moment of reflection, please join me to pledge our support in standing up to bullying in all forms by working together to cultivate safe, accepting, equitable, and inclusive environments in our schools and our work sites. Thank you. Is there any disclosure or pecuniary interest of any of the um, items before you this evening on the agenda? Okay, I see none. That the minutes of the regular meeting of the Board of October 20, 2020 be approved as printed. Can I have a mover? Thank you, uh, Trustee Atkinson, second. Trustee Morgan 
any errors, omissions, deletions that you are aware of? All in favor? Carried. Next, that the minutes of the Committee of the Whole Board meeting of November 3rd, 2020 be approved as printed. Can I have a mover for that, please? Thank you, Trustee McComb, second. Trustee Dawson, any errors, omissions that you are aware of in those minutes? All in favor and carried. Is there any business arising from the minutes for either um, October 20th or November 3rd? Okay, I see none. That the Blue Water District School Board received the Adult Education Graduation 2020 Report for Information. I'm going to put it on the floor. Can I have a mover? Thank you, Trustee Boyd John, and second, Trustee Lutz, and thank you, Superintendent Hamilton. Thank you, Chair Johnston. On October 21st, uh, we hosted um, the commencement exercises for our adult education school. Um, we were really pleased to have uh, Chair Johnston and um, Director Wilder uh, be a part of the uh, celebrations that evening. Um, it was really a, a wonderful evening to see. We had, uh, as you can see in your report, we had uh, 64 graduates, but 19 of them joined us that night. And it was really a, a very rewarding evening. I'm delighted this evening to uh, invite our uh, administ uh, Learning Services Administrator uh, for Student Success, who also is the principal of the Adult Education School, to come. And she's going to introduce our teachers who are going to share the report with us. So, Andrea Tang, if you could come. Thank you, Paul. It's my pleasure to introduce Jody McDonald, one of the teachers associated with the adult learning that does mostly prior learning um, and credit courses, and Kara French on the other side of the room that has primary responsibility for co-op for adults, and they're going to deliver the report. Thank you. Good evening. Um, just have a little bit of a pre uh, PowerPoint presentation for you. Just want to highlight uh, some of the highlights from our graduation um, from October and just a little bit about our, um, our current school year and how we're managing with adult education. So um, as Paul mentioned, um, we did the drive-by that was approved by um, public health. So we had our table set up. Uh, it had rained that day. So is this Guy, the, cl the clouds were clearing just uh, about 15 minutes before um, we were expecting our first grads to show up, so it worked out in our favor. Um, our, get our gift bags uh, just had a few little gifts inside, along with the diploma for the students. So, there were opportunity for students to get their diploma at the diploma station, and then an opportunity for them, for them to um, use that backdrop as um, their photo shoot with their loved ones or with themselves. Um, just a couple of case studies just to highlight some of our students to give you an idea of some of the, the, the students that we work with. Um, so Anthony, we have to have the consent obviously to talk about them and share their story. Um, Anthony came to us with four credits on his um, high school transcript. So he had quite a bit to do, um, but he was able to write many of the PLAR assessments for the junior compulsory credits. Um, so he wrote his assessments in science and math and Canadian history, Canadian geography, um, in order to earn the 12 credits. Uh, he was also eligible for 10 senior PLAR credits, so PLAR's prior learning assessment recognition. So Anthony has worked a lot um, in terms of automotive type of employment. So I was able to grant him a lot of credits uh, in, in the tech field, um, in addition to sort of life, life learning skills as well. Um, and then with PLAR, the, um, the limit with PLAR is you can only earn up to 26 of the 30 credits to graduate and um, students are, have to earn their final four credits always. So um, Anthony was a, a great example of our program as well because he took a variety of programs. Um, he participated in the hybrid night class for his senior level English courses. Um, he participated in the credits at work 
which is the paid co-op program. Um, through that, we were also able to register him through the Ontario Youth Friendship Program. So he was able to collect some of his hours prior to his graduation. Um, and he was now a registered apprentice um, and he's working um, on becoming a um, coach, truck and coach technician. So, and then you see him there. Uh, it was kind of great. Many of the grads brought their families and lots of young children. Um, sometimes it's the teenagers that were with them. And so I think it was very, uh, it was excellent for their, uh, their children to see them uh, putting the, uh, their importance on education. I think many of our graduates, when they first register with adult education, uh, one of their reasons for doing so is often um, so they have credibility with their with their children when it comes to education and attending their classes. So, uh, another case study. So Lori Vaughn, um, she was actually a formerly a student of the Sal Center in Walkerton. She earned some credits there, but didn't complete her high school diploma. So as an adult, she returned. Um, she was able to earn seven credits through the junior PLAR process and uh, five credits through the senior PLAR process. Um, she had attended Georgian College to do some credits as a mature student, so I was able to use some of her transcripts from college, from Georgian College, um, towards those senior PLAR credits. Uh, and then she participated in her final four credits, also including the hybrid night course for senior level Englishes. Uh, she also uh, participated in our um, dual credit program for adults in partnership with Georgian College um, that we've now run twice for each of the two years that the program has been running. Um, the neat story about the, um, Lori is that's her best friend, Amanda, and also what happens with adult education is uh, the best promotion is often the word of mouth. So Lori uh, registered with the program, got started, and she got her friend, Amanda, to participate in the program as well. They uh, have been best friends since they were young um, in elementary school. They um, left high school early together, and then they joined in an adult education together and graduated together. So they were very proud of themselves for that. Chris Gale, uh, we do have quite a few newcomers um, to the country. Actually, maybe Chris wouldn't be qualified quite as a newcomer. He's been in Canada since 2010. But uh, he immigrated from Jamaica, so obviously he didn't have any Ontario Secondary School credits on his transcript when he came to adult education. So for many of our newcomers, uh, they can earn the 26 credits through PLAR relatively quickly if they have a transcript from uh, their previous country. Um, uh, they obviously don't have Ontario or Canadian geography or Canadian history as part of their curriculum where they came from. So that's often part of their junior PLAR process is to write the assessments associated with those two subject areas. Uh, Chris has a lot of work experience that allowed me to easily grant him the 10 credits of senior PLAR in addition to his Jamaican transcript. Um, Chris participated in um, the dual credits, sorry, not the dual credit, the hybrid night classes, and he also uh, participated in the credits at work program. Uh, he's one of our graduates, actually, once he had his OSSD. I know he applied for a custodial position here at the board. I don't know if he got the job, but that was <laughs> we, two of our students from last year actually applied for that position back in October. So um, it's um, great to see them making use of their uh, credentials. So, And our last one is Sierra. All of the knowledge we have Sorry. learned from our teachers and professional advisors will no doubt be valuable as we go forward in life. But the most important thing I've learned over the last couple years is that we are capable of succeeding in anything in life as long as we are determined, disciplined, and hardworking. With these qualities, we are able to overcome many obstacles to complete high school. And with these qualities, in the future, we will be capable of achieving so many other aspirations. I know from experience that success is not easy in any area. In my life, I have encountered many obstacles to pursuing my goals. From a young age, I was diagnosed with severe dyslexia, avoidance issues, bad anxiety, ADHD, and auto processing disability. These conditions have presented many challenges for me in the terms of learning, socialization, human relationships, and professional development. For a long time, my response to these difficulties was simply to avoid them and settle for less than what I was capable of. 
Finally, after maturing later in life, I decided to face my challenges and live according to my true potential. I went back to finish high school at the age of 30. I was a single mother in a new town with no family support. My entire high school education before this consisted of two credits from grade nine. Finally, after a long effort and hard work, I am now a lot closer to achieving my goal to become a social service worker. I recently completed the personal support worker program at Georgian College, and I am presently on track to complete the social worker program. So that was a clip we took from Sierra. Sierra Thorpe, she was our valedictorian. Um, it was kind of actually great the way it worked out. She was able to come um, to Chesley the day before graduation to put on her cap and gown and to um, record her speech. And then we were able to send that out to all of our graduates um, through her email group. So um, she, did a, she did a great job in terms of representing the group. Uh, so Sierra, um, again, as she told her story better than I, than I can, um, but she, she definitely is an advocate to any of the adult students that are um, graduating to continue their education with post-secondary and um, trying to do that immediately. We have a lot of our grads that are, um, you know, they, they kind of pause and they, they take some time to figure out how they're going to do that next step, but uh, it's great when we, we have the graduates that are applying directly to their post-secondary program from our program, which is it's good to see them moving along. So um, Sierra has a, done a great job at taking, um, looking for the resources that she needs to be successful, and as a result, she's finding lots of success. She's also expecting her second child, and um, it's recently remarried, so, our, so she's been a busy, busy, busy woman. <laughs> Um, finally, just a little bit about this school year. We are continuing despite um, COVID and the challenges. Um, we're trying to do as many things remotely as possible. So the, it, the process isn't the smoothest. Uh, it's nice to meet somebody in person so you get to know them a little bit better. Um, phone calls and emails are, are doing the trick at the moment, but there's definitely a lag time between uh, sending registration forms out and waiting for them to be returned to actually get registered in programs and get started. So um, there's definitely some lag time and, and it, it does cause a few challenges. Um, what else? I'm trying, I don't have my glasses, so I'm trying to see. Totally get that. Uh, we do run our hybrid night classes, which are predominantly senior, uh, senior English courses. We, run them traditionally in the fall and in the spring, so we are continuing to run that through the hybrid model. In the spring, we had to pivot our hybrid model to an online. I didn't know that's what we did then, but now I know it was called pivoting, but we pivoted. Um, so we're obviously we set up with the, with the hopes that we'd be able to do the hybrid. Um, having that face-to-face -face time with the teacher one night a week uh, definitely increases the success rate of the students that are doing um, those, those courses. So. Uh, so far, so good. They're able to continue. We've got um, two teachers running two different classes, and they uh, occur in Owen Sound in Port Elgin, in Walkerton, in King Garden. Uh, also, the Credits at Work program is continuing. Kara is uh, monitoring uh, students that are out in their employment, and um, we're also offering some correspondence and independent courses um, through distance as well. I don't know if anybody has any questions that they may have about the program. Um, so is there any qu questions or comments? So Trustee Lutz. There we go, sorry. I'm, oh. <laughs> Thank you so much for this uh, presentation and for all the work you do to run this program. I must say hear, hearing the success of it every year is, is a true highlight for us and I really appreciate it and I appreciate hearing how all of our adult students are doing and, and the reminder of not only the many different programs we offer but how that offers the ability to the many different pathways to an education. So 
Thank you both for the reminder for us and for the incredible support you are giving so many people in their, uh, their quest for education. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Any other comments, questions concerning the adult program? I don't see any. I, I want to say that I really, really appreciated attending the graduation. It was actually kind of a lot of fun to be outside and just the way it worked out where they drove up and, you know, and then, you, you know, congratulations. And then they could park their car and go under, I think you could say the canopy and have pictures. Um, I could really tell that it was a real family event. Um, mm -hmm. And absolutely, you know, the fact that, you know, some people actually, I think somebody brought their mother, you know, like it was just, it was, you know, the important people in their life. And absolutely, I, I, I see that as a, a very strong leadership and, and also, um, you know, for their own children, you know, to see their parents um, or, or parent persevere and get a high school diploma and go on to um, in other educational opportunities or, you know, the, you know in, in terms of work. So I want to also thank um, you both for the wonderful work you do. I could tell that they, that the students um, really appreciated all your efforts in helping them be successful in their educational attainment. Thank you. Um, I was glad we made the effort to do the graduation. It was really important for those that did show up. And um, the following day, I even got a phone call from Garnet to <laughs> remind me how much, or to let me know how much money he had and appreciated the effort. So um, yeah, it was definitely worth doing that to recognize their achievements. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to put the motion back on the floor that the Blue Water District School Board received the adult education graduation 2020 report for information. It was moved by Trustee Boyd John and seconded by Trustee Lutz. All in favor and opposed and of course that's carried. Next um, under reports at the Blue Water District School Board received the committee of the whole board meeting report for information. Can I have a mover for that please? Thank you, Trustee Thompson, second, Trustee Morgan, and I'm up. <laughs> oh, okay, so sorry about that. So we're gonna have to change up how we, um, I'm trying to do something simultaneous. So who did we, we had somebody down to move that, but I'm actually moving it because I chaired that meeting. So who was the second person, do you remember? Okay, so Trustee Morgan, and then we'll catch you the next time, okay, Trustee Thompson? Don't worry. I think I got it figured out. So um, the, uh, it, during that committee meeting, um, we received um, some different reports for information and discussion, spe um, Special Education Advisory Committee, Indigenous Education Advisory Committee, Parent Involvement Committee, Health and Safety Quarterly Report, My Blueprint, School Update. And as a consequence, because it was really just discussion, there was no recommendations for board approval. Is there any questions concerning that report? I see none. So here we go, that the Blue Water District School Board received the Committee of the Whole Board Meeting Report for information. It was uh, moved by Trustee Johnstone, seconded by Trustee Morgan. All in favor and opposed, and that's carried. Okay, next. Okay. Ah. That the Blue Water District School Board approve. This. Wait a minute. Are you sure? Okay. I'm just looking. I think I lost my place. So I'm on reports. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to ask Trustee Dawson to give your report, and then I'm going to put the motions on the floor. So go ahead, Trustee Thank Dawson. Thank
Thank you. Okay, so now I'm going to put it on the, uh, the first um, motion on the floor that the Blue Water District School Board approve the audit planning report to the audit committee. Can I have a mover for that? Um, Trustee Dawson, seconded Trustee Thompson. Any um, questions, comments? I see none. That's carried. All in favor? I missed a part. Thank you. Next, that the Blue Water District School Board approve the proposed regional internal audit plan 2020 and 2021. Can I have a mover for that, please? Thank you, Trustee Lutz. Second, Trustee um, McComb. Any questions, comments concerning that motion? I see none. All in favor? And opposed, and that's carried. So thank you very much. I just wanted to add here that um, today my husband was out and about. I think he was down the beach, and he met a local bus driver in King Carden who shared with him that the day that we had our, our announcement at, in front of KDSS um, about the new school, that she heard it on the radio and she was driving the bus with a bunch of students. I'm not sure, you know, what school they were, but she turned around and said, you guys are all getting a new high school. He said all the kids on that bus yipped and yayed and clapped and everything. So I want to let you know that the students who will eventually be attending that school were really excited about the announcement. Okay, next. A report from the community hall, just to we met the legislative agenda. Is that next? I know. Okay. Just want to make sure. Okay. Trustee Vi uh, Thompson, Vice Chair, would you like to give your report for Committee of the Whole in camera? Yes. Thank you very much, Vice Chair. Um, next, we're at B3. Is there any notices of motion coming before the board this evening? I see none. We don't have any committee establishments and appointments. We're now down to reports for information, and I would like to invite student, uh, student Senator Wall to give the Student Senate report. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so we have had uh, a busy few months as uh, a Senate, and while COVID-19 has made things difficult, it has also provided opportunities for innovation, and it's a challenge to overcome, is how I've chosen to, chosen to think about it. Um, our first big project that we've accomplished has been a, a large-scale survey of the student body, and I'd like to call uh, Alexis Hollister to speak about that a little more, as she was the spearhead behind it. So we sent out this survey in around mid-October, 
It comprised of eight questions with a comment box at the bottom. We received 797 responses. I will share three of the main questions that had the biggest concerns from the comment section with you today. And we are also going to put out a follow-up questionnaire type thing on our Instagram page to check back in with the students and how they're doing. So our first question was, how satisfied are you with safety measures put in place at your school? 324 kids said they were satisfied, 261 said neutral, 78 were dissatisfied, and 134 said non-applicable. We also sent this out to the remote kids, so that would be um, the non-applicable side. The second question was, how would you rate the transportation systems being provided? 260 said good, 199 said okay, and 101 said poor, and then 228 said not applicable. The third question was, how would you rate the impact that COVID-19 has had on your mental health? 98, sorry, so our scale went from not greatly to greatly. Um, 98 said one, 160 said two. The largest section was 224 kids at level three, 188 at four, and 123 out of five. Any questions, I guess? Is there any questions or comments concerning the uh, student's uh, Senate report? Go ahead, uh, student Senator Wall. Okay, okay. Okay, not a problem. Thank you. Go right ahead. Oh. Uh, sorry about the confusion. I should have been more clear. Um, this was one of our biggest projects so far, but it's not our only project so far. Um, we've also done a, a numerous amount of smaller scale uh, items that we have uh, done via our Instagram account. And Taylor Legg has been invaluable on that front, and she'd like to come up and talk a little bit about what we've been working on that. Uh, hi, so as Sebastian mentioned, um, I'm Taylor Legg. I run the Student Senate Instagram account called BWDSB Students. Uh, we have approximately 870 followers right now. Uh, so it doesn't seem like a super big amount, but it's enough that like it's the largest body we can access from where we are because the way the routines change in the school, we don't really get to see a lot of students very often anymore. So that's kind of where we're trying to make our point of contact right now. So what we've been working on is I've been introducing the senators in different posts, to kind of put the face to the operation, and we make sure to link the, the senators school email so that people can access them whenever. Um, we also put out some information that was given to us from public health on like lung health, especially in students with like the vaping and smoking issues that we see in school sometimes. Um, just today we compiled a, resor a resource inventory for mental health things. We got them all from the board website, but last meeting we ran a bit of a test drive of that website and we found it was kind of hard for us to access the page with all the mental health resources so we put them all in a highlight on our Instagram story so that kids see them in their feed and they're there whenever they need them um, and it kind of makes us available all the time we get a lot of we get actually a fair bit of direct messages to the account and I answer them to the best of my ability but I usually have to refer them to someone else who can answer the questions better than me um, they were more frequent at the start of the school year because there was a little bit of uncertainty. But now I find that it, it's less frequent. And a large portion of the messages come from students who are in remote learning and they're not really sure what they're supposed to be doing. And I'm not in remote learning, so it's hard for me to answer those. But I try my best and I try and direct those. So that's all I've got for their social media. I just wanted to know if there was any questions or comments. Go ahead, uh, Director Wild. I would just like to comment 
uh, and compliment the, the student senate and trustees. Uh, you've done a great amount of work in your short time in your role and um, I'm really proud of the way you've uh, done your best to connect with students and uh, surveying them and accessing information and being accessible to them as you've described. Uh, so kudos to all of you and uh, it's nice for students in our system to understand that the students avail the Senate is available and that you are there to support them in your role. So thanks very much. It's great. Go ahead, uh, student trustee Wall. Yeah. Further questions or comment comment? Uh, yes, I again like to repeat how impressed I am with um, the Senate and although our ability to reach out and hear the student voice has been hampered. Uh, I never thought I'd miss the assemblies as much as I have. But we've been, we've been working really hard on getting this information out there. And if I may be permitted an anecdote, every time we meet, and indeed it seems almost every day, uh, I get a message from Taylor describing some issue that a student has had. And I've been really impressed with her uh, asking for help for where do I put her or where do I put, how do I help this student and I think that's been uh, extremely helpful to some people who are lost in these confusing times and trustee Dawson I saw your hand up any other questions or comments I Jane I mean trustee Thompson Any further questions or comments? I have a comment. I just want to say that, um, um, and, it's, and it's kind of perfect, it's um, because um, there's always a staff person uh, attached to the student senators and trustees. So I'd like to welcome Superintendent Elliott, who is actually going to be uh, working with the student trustees and senators this for the rest of this term. So thank you and welcome. So next um, on our list for staff reports that the Blue Water District School Board received the remote school report for information. Can I have a, thank you, Trustee Boyd John, didn't have to finish. Second, Trustee Atkinson, and I'd like to welcome um, Superintendent Hamilton and Callahan eventually. Go ahead. Yes, uh, I'm going to present on behalf of uh, myself and uh, Superintendent Callahan. Um, you are well aware that uh, we, we did uh, create a remote school uh, for students who uh, did not feel uh, that they were, uh, would feel safe or comfortable coming to our face-to-face -face schools uh, this fall. So we had a hearty response. We had over 1,800 students who uh, opted for the remote school. Um, and so we talked a little bit earlier this evening about how we initially uh, staffed it with occasional teachers, but in both the secondary and the elementary panel, we've now moved to, um, to um, our full-time, uh, sorry, permanent staff. Um, I'm very pleased uh, this evening to um, invite our co-principals, Carla Whiteside, who was our math lead, has been, <laughs> but really spending a lot of time, all of her time with the remote school uh, for at least for the first part of the year. And I think she's getting a little bit of time now to do some of the math. And then uh, Keith Lefebvre, who was uh, our technology enhanced learning contact and a manager of information for student achievement uh, person. And he has been also um, co-principal for the school. 
And, we, and Andrea Tang, who was here earlier, Learning Services Administrator, has been key in helping to set up the secondary um, remote school. And we've just started into the second quadmester, and there was a lot of work getting that up and going. It's been an entire team effort, lots of uh, man hours, and uh, really uh, some amazing commitment and work that has been done. So I'd like to invite uh, Keith and Carla to come forward, and they're going to uh, present the report. And I think Andrea is going to come as well and was able to uh, address any questions uh, that may be related to the secondary school. Keith's friend of technology. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Um, so I'll, I always have to script my um, my thoughts, but then I can be will be open up for questions. So as Paul said, the K to 12 remote school started in the fall with just over 1,800 students from across the board. In response to the various needs of our students within Blue Water, we provided several options to access learning, including synchronous learning, asynchronous learning, and alternative learning for elementary. We have approximately 130 staff members including both elementary teachers, EC, uh, early childhood educators, and secondary teachers. Other staff include an office manager and an office professional. So we thought we'd maybe try to capture a day in the life. Um, as Paul said, it is a team effort. We have many processes in place. Some of them are similar, very similar to the physical schools, and some are very different. We just want to start by saying the building of the remote school was and continues to be a team effort. Our day begins by ensuring that our students, parents, and staff are set up for a successful day. Our office is an ongoing um, hub of phone calls and emails with students, parents, and staff to troubleshoot and problem solve to, to, solve, problem solve, uh, to make the learning and teaching effective. This is settling into a routine. I didn't know if I'd ever say that, but it is settling into a routine. There are a few, fewer technology-related questions. While our teaching staff are the first contact with parents and students with technology challenges, our ICT staff monitors an extension. So like we said, it's a team effort. We continue to refine our communication with families and staff. The teachers are, as I said, the first contact with the students and parents. Our communication with homes includes messages through school messenger, and, and we have a Facebook page. Uh, the communication with our staff is through weekly memos, and, and we have a dedicated remote school bright space shell. We've established processes related to special education, uh, I, um, individual education plans, and IPRC process, so very similar to the physical school. We have completed one quadmester in secondary and learned many things and uh, applied those to a smoother startup, definitely to quadmaster two. Hope we'll have it refined by quadmaster three and four. So I think Keith and I are gonna switch places and he's going to take over, talk about two other slides and then we'll come together as a consolidation slide. Carla and I have been quite the team over the last uh, couple of months. It's been uh, quite an adventure, um, and I'm really proud to say that uh, we were just having a staff meeting recently um, with our secondary staff, and I was really proud to um, say that what we've accomplished so far, these are the Quadmaster 2 teachers that were just joining us, and I was really proud to talk to them about what we accomplished in Quadmaster 1 and all of the work that was done, and Andrea and her team have been um, absolutely um, amazing at being able to support that so um, what we want to do is we want to uh, take you to a couple of shells uh, course shells in Brightspace and Carla's just doing that right now so there are two platforms that we allow our teachers to use either Brightspace which is the provincial virtual learning environment platform that uh, teachers can use across Ontario that we certainly have adopted and used quite uh, uh, quite broadly across uh, K to 12 and uh, Teams, uh, Microsoft Office 365 Teams, which is a um, which is a really robust program that allows for uh, virtual conferencing, and that is where most of the virtual conferencing, so any synchronous education, takes place within Teams. 
but Teams also has some other um, abilities that certainly make it uh, lend itself quite well to a virtual learning environment as well. Close? So I believe the first uh, learning environment is going to be uh, from a uh, secondary geography classroom. Yeah, so this is from CGC 1P. It's actually a 1P, 1D. Good job, Carla. <laughs> and um, what you're gonna see at the very top there, the nav bar um, that appears at the top, um, takes you either to the course homepage. It also takes you to, there's a, um, a really nice open classroom Teams um, setup. So this is a button that the student is able to just click on and be able to enter the classroom with the teacher and engage with the teacher. There's also two breakout rooms that are set up at the top. So if the teacher wanted to work with uh, one group of students separately from another group, um, she could ask them to go into those rooms and be working so that the teacher could jump back and forth between the rooms and monitor what's happening. As well as there's a stream channel on the far right and stream is the application within Office 365 where all Teams recordings take place. So when a Teams meeting happens uh, and the teacher presses record, then it records it and puts it into a stream. And it's almost like, it's almost like a very private and secure YouTube. Um, so it's just contained within our environment, within the, the board. It cannot be viewed. The videos cannot be viewed by anyone else other than people who have the tenant bwdsb.on.ca, so staff and students. And then teachers are able to restrict the, uh, the accessibility to each of those videos specific to individual students. So it's very secure. Um, and then if you scroll down just a little bit, Carla, to the bottom, uh, you'll just notice that this teacher is laid out in her announcements widget. Everything on the page we call a widget. So the announcement widget is on the left-hand side, and that shows you just the agenda for the day. It lays out the, um, the work that's gonna take place. And then she's also put a number of assignments in that are all listed in the calendar widget on the right-hand side. So very handy. And because Carla is listed as a teacher in this class, You'll, she'll also see the Microsoft Teams widget down on the far right hand side. This is a widget that allows her to actually create a live meeting at any time that she wants to. And this is really handy for our um, secondary uh, supply teachers that might come in, supply guest teachers that come into the room. They can actually create a live meeting and meet with the teachers to support them, even though they're a guest teacher in the room. If you jump to the other, um, the other one, Carla. The second one was um, created, and I actually I asked the, the teachers recently if they could if they'd be willing to share their course shells, and obviously these are teachers that said I'd be more than happy to share those, um, and you can share those with the trustees. Um, this is a science teacher that put this second one together. And what we really liked about this one, if you scroll down just a little bit on the left-hand side, you'll notice that she is, uh, you'll actually see there's a link in there written from one of our supply teachers today. This teacher happened to be away today. So the supply teacher was able to come in, she was able to put a link in and access that link and be able to work with the students through the work that was assigned to the students that day. And then the students have all of the work assigned. Um, everything is laid out for them. If you click on one of the, that top link that we looked at before. Thank you, Carla. And if you just expand it to a full page, this is what a typical uh, uh, lesson would look like within the VLE. So there's a video introducing, there's a minds on activity, and then there's work for the students to be completing. Um, and then they enter things and put it into a drop box or an assignment drop box. So it's very well laid out, it's very visually appealing, and it's easy for the kids to navigate. <laughs> that was not expected.
And I think the next slide was just, um, this is an example of a class notebook that was taken from a, a math classroom and one of the math teachers who uses Teams quite extensively, she said, why don't you show them some of my class notebooks? So I pulled out an example from the class notebook just showing some of the work that the students were doing and the teacher was doing just to help them solve an equation down in the left-hand corner. Please don't look at the equations the students solved in the top left and bottom right because there are errors. <laughs> <laughs> but I really like the work that was done in the bottom left corner, so I wanted to highlight this one. Anyway, that now everyone's focused on trying to find the error. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Test your math. So this is an interactive notebook, a class notebook. It can be linked quite easily within both the um, Brightspace and within Teams. And the notebook is, um, it, it's created in such a way that it's, it's collaborative in nature as well. So the student can be working on the notebook at the same time the teacher's working on the notebook and they can actually see the work that's being done. During a math class that I taught this summer, I was actually working with a student on a notebook and uh, he was able to just follow along. He wasn't even watching the video of me doing the work. He was actually watching the notebook and just listening to me. So he's like, I just, I like watching how you're solving the problem and listening to you talk. And he said that he found that really helpful. Anyway, I thought that was quite interesting. But everyone learns so differently and it's, it's so important that you just understand how your student learns best. The school council, uh, we are um, a school and therefore we have a school council. We met for the first time on October 21st. It took a little bit of time for us to get together and meet, but we were able to meet. We had approximately 16 members, um, uh, uh, 16 parents who are part of the uh, school council. We elected our first council chair, Imtiaz Syed, and we had a, uh, an election actually. We had two people speaking and then we had an election for our, uh, our chair. And we've met since with MTS, and we've decided on um, a structure for the new council. And we are meeting again very soon in December. And we are going to be um, having our second meeting on December 8th. We're also initiating a parent survey uh, that's going home with our next report cards, our Quadmaster 1 report cards, as well as our uh, progress reports for elementary. And that parent survey will be asking one simple question. What are the most effective practices that you have seen from your online uh, experiences? We, what we really want to do is highlight all of the positives that are happening within the online school and the remote school. And we want to share those with one another so that we can build on that capacity. And in light of that, I'd just like to share one um, quick email that was sent to us from one of our teachers just following the reorganization. And this is a really, uh, I thought this was such a wonderful email to receive. So this came to us on October 20th. This was the first day after our reorganization. She says, hey you two, just a quick note to let you know that day one is going great. The kids and parents are so happy with my pace, program and setup so far. I'm thrilled to be in this position and I thank you for the opportunity. The training and videos have been uber helpful and I feel confident I can run a strong program. My heart is so full of gratitude and excitement right now for all the things I'm going to do with my kiddos. Thank you so much for getting me set up. Warm regards. So I thought that was a wonderful message to receive from one of our educators and it just goes to show all the work was worth it and uh, we're making some great strides. Carla, did we have another slide? Right. Okay, and just to finish off, um, the learning curve has been large. Uh, we recognize this and we provide a variety of professional learning opportunities. We, so far, we've had a number of um, our st regular staff meetings as well as voluntary uh, sessions that are recorded. Um, in addition, uh, many sessions have been offered by our learning services program departments, whether it's student support or learning services or student success. And just to uh, just con 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 conclude, professional learning will continue in response to the interests, the needs, and the readiness of our staff. I just wanted to know if, if we could take, if anybody had any questions or comments sure. for this segment. OK. 
Okay, uh, student trustee Wall. Uh, so it sounds that there's a quite robust system in place for the uh, remote learning school. My question is if you have any sense of how easily that system um, could be used for transitioning from um, in the worst case event that we have to close brick and mortar schools again, how easily will students be able to transition to this new style of learning? So we have asked, that's a good, great question, uh, Sebastian, thank you. Um, we have asked that our teachers are ready for that and they are, you know, they're working on their, their shelves and we've asked that they make sure that students, you know, have the uh, ability to access the shell uh, so that in the event that we do need to pivot uh, to that, that we're ready to go. So schools are working on that. They're at various stages. Um, I mean, lots of our students had an opportunity in the spring to kind of experience that and you know they had uh, so and and lots of our staff as well so it's a work in progress and, uh, many many staff do have them up and are ready to go and the others are, are on the way I don't know if that answers your question yeah thank you any further questions or comments in this section go ahead trustee Lutz and then trustee Dawson I just wanted to thank you for the great presentation and ask you to pass on to your staff just how fantastic it all looks and I don't know about anyone else but as a trustee you know the first week or so of school I was getting flooded with not so kind messages from people who were doing online learning and that has all stopped and what I'm seeing on my social media feed is all really really positive things. So I just want to say I know the learning curve was hard for everyone, but it has paid off. And I have taken many online classes that I paid a lot of money for in post-secondary in my life. Those look way better. <laughs> Please tell your staff they are doing an incredible job. Thank you. Thank you. We'll pass that along. Our educators do a wonderful job, and they've really, um, I think, just hit their stride, and their things are only going to get better. Trustee Dawson. For this section, uh, uh, Trustee um, Thompson. I just, uh, I was wondering if you could share your presentation with uh, the trustees. That's one of the gaps for us here in the virtual world. Yeah, absolutely. There, um, Bev is going to send it. Okay. Yeah. You, send it, you send it, then it'll be there. And, and thank you for mentioning that, uh, Vice Chair Thompson. I just wanted to say something because you, you mentioned um, this, that you elected a chair for the remote school um, and you're having your next meeting in December and it would be great because this whole, the remote school is all the trustees of the board. So it would be great if we could also, you know, be invited and so for trustees who want to attend, you know, council, it would also be really good to hear what parents are having to, to say and, and actually maybe even bring, you know, some kind of information, re, you know, oftentimes me as a trustee, I give a report from the board or they have questions for me that I try to answer to the best of my ability. So we'll make sure to send an invitation to the trustees. Super, thank you. Want to go on? Uh, I just wanted to just kind of wrap it up by saying thank you again to this amazing team. Uh, many, many hours, uh, early mornings, late nights, and uh, as I said, it's been a large, uh, lots of support. Um, a lot, some jurisdictions have really, uh, they've given up. They just uh, have not been able to sustain it uh, for lots of, lots of very good reasons. Um, but just kudos to this team for the, the work that they've done. 
And, uh, and it's not been without difficulties. You know, we've had students who have struggled, staff who have struggled, um, but um, have persevered. And so it's just uh, very, very proud of this team. District School Board received the remote school report for information. It was uh, moved by Trustee Boy John, seconded by Trustee Atkinson. All in favor and opposed and carried. And those were really good, great questions and comments. Next, that the Blue Water District School Board received the school update report for information. Um, I have a mover for that, please. Trustee Thompson, seconded Trustee McComb. And I would like to welcome Superintendent Elliott. Is that better? <laughs> um, so the team had prepared a school remote learning readiness assessment for principals to, uh, just as, as a planning document to help them with the thought processes that would be required uh, to go through in order to be ready in the event that we flip to um, remote learning. And so they used that assessment to uh, examine what they had in their building, for instance, what kind of devices they had, um, in uh, doing some surveying with families to see um, what family need was, what families need devices, but also what families may need support with internet, uh, ensuring that teachers were set up in, their, uh, in the VLE, such as you saw in the presentation, and then even going so far in some schools as having students practice logging on to make sure that they were comfortable in the environment, all the things that we wish we would have had uh, the ability to have done before we went home uh, in March. And um, so that assessment was sent in to us last Friday, gave us a little bit of Id an idea of where our schools are. And as uh, Superintendent Hamilton said, there's a, uh, we're at varying levels of readiness, but all of the principals have their minds set to that and are working on uh, getting their schools ready. Um, while I'm here as well, I had the opportunity recently to meet with all of our new administrators, and we do have quite a crew of new administrators. And I was really pleased in part of the introduction, I asked them uh, what they felt the biggest challenges they were facing and what the positives were uh, out in the schools. And resoundingly, the response that I received from new administrators was that although they have had some adjustments with the protocols, they really do feel that uh, things are settling down, things are falling into place, and that they're able to now um, ensure that they're concentrating on instruction and uh, quality teaching and learning in their schools, and that was a very positive thing. I'd like to uh, welcome two of my colleagues, uh, Superintendent Callahan and uh, Superintendent Cummings. They also wanted to say a few words tonight. Thank you, and good evening. It really dovetails nicely into Superintendent Elliott's comments around uh, looking at instruction again and getting back to that point. Last time I spoke to you, as you know, I always get very excited about the learning that we're doing. And some of the professional learning that we are working on in program and student success really is work that we normally do around mathematics. That's a big focus for us, as you know, and we usually bring you reports about that. And we're getting back into that again. We're doing some work with our grade nine and 10 teachers, our grade eight teachers. So really getting back into the work that we've done in the past. But we're also really looking at professional learning in a new way because there's new needs. And so as you know, you have to look at your district and say, what, are, what do our staff need now? So one of the pieces we have, you would have seen in the, uh, in the remote learning presentation tonight that we have occasional teachers. It's a school in our remote school. And so we are putting together some, some work and some good uh, sessions that we're going to do with occasional teachers because what does that look like? Because teaching in a remote school, as you saw, looks different. So we want to make sure that we can welcome our guest, or our guest um, 
teachers into the school, and some might not feel as comfortable. So that's some work that we're doing. The other piece is our new teachers. We're working with them just in a little bit of a different way because we have to meet with them on teams, so we're working with them. And also our math AQs, which I talked about before, our um, additional qualifications. So we had 60 people that just started with their additional qualification courses, as I mentioned before. And Carla Whiteside is one of our instructors, and they just started last week. So they're doing their work. They work on teams, they work at night, and that's through Brock University. And also, I just wanted to mention our literacy sessions. So we talked last time about our after-school sessions and how people have now, are really looking for this professional learning. And we talked about remote learning. Now we've done some sessions on literacy in the remote world, and we had a really good response. We also record those sessions, though, so for people that just can't attend for us, we know that people have family obligations and things like that, so we do that. And then we have a numeracy session that's coming up. So we're very excited. We're off and running. Our work looks a little bit different, but um, people are excited to continue this work, so we're excited about that. Good evening. So a brief update from the business services side. And uh, it is brief this time because we've been filling in along the way here. Uh, our supplies and PPE purchasing are starting to streamline and normalize. Uh, so we are starting to get our deliveries on a regular basis. Uh, the province has also helped out by changing their delivery system. So they've segmented the province in four different uh, service areas and their deliveries range by four different weeks through uh, a 28-day cycle, uh, which is much more effective for all the school boards uh, in terms of getting timely shipments, uh, getting accurate shipments, and getting the shipments to the right facility. Uh, so that's, uh, that's some of the good news, and that's making it much easier uh, for our schools and everybody else in our maintenance shop to, uh, to work with that. Uh, I'm not going to say much about this. We talked about our driver shortage. We've basically filled every driver shortage by optimizing some routes. The only, we only had one route that we didn't, weren't able to optimize, and we were able to do a little mini B run on that one. So uh, that one does, uh, does provide the option for some students to arrive a few minutes later than normal. Uh, and we are looking for a more permanent solution for that one run right now. And on the plant services side, um, we've talked about our custodial labor uh, shortage. Uh, we're at a point now where we have hired a number of custodians. Uh, they're in the process of security and training before they can actually get out to a school. Uh, so we're very pleased with our, our numbers that we've gotten in and uh, they will be uh, getting to our schools in, uh, in a week or two. Uh, probably two weeks is my guess at this point. Uh, filter changes uh, certainly added to our regular maintenance schedule with the new filters going in and more frequency for those filters to go in. And our third party companies have been contracted, uh, Siemens, uh, to complete comprehensive assessments of our rooftop economizers. So that's the fresh, fresh air ventilation air sources in our schools. Uh, and just an order of magnitude, that's about 300 units that they will be assessing at this point in time. And that is our report from the Business Services. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any questions or comments from trustees, senators? Okay, I don't see any. Thank you very much. So that the Blue Water District School Board received the school update report for information. It was moved by Trustee Thompson, seconded by Trustee McComb. All in favor and opposed and carried. Uh, now we're under communication. I have not received any correspondence <laughs> that I'm aware of. What? Oh, I thought I heard something. Okay. Um, next is under communication and announcements, so um, student trustees, trustee staff, Ministry of Education, and OPSPA. So um, student trustees, do you have any announcements? Student trustee Wall, do you have anything to add there? Oh. Um, I have a field trip that somebody was asked, that I was asked to uh, ask for um, permission, I suppose, to host that, is now a time to uh, 
present that or should I wait? Um, field trips come through the superintendent who report them and then um, there's, a, there's quite a process depending on the field trip. Uh, we haven't been really bringing many forward just to COVID. We're not going far. So it really should be the principal that works with the teacher in the school who, and then the principal gives it to the superintendent who brings it forward to trustees. Thank you. That was a great question. Um, the, um, it says something about ops, but so just um, to um, let trustees know that um, Opsbeds, um, the Ontario Public School Board has been very busy. They were doing a lot of uh, response to the Ministry of Education and with all the different kinds of changes. They're, they're consulting with, with trustees on, on different committees and also with boards and, and having, having to respond. So it's actually been uh, quite busy in terms of having, um, you can say, school board input. Um, and the other thing is just recently, because you um, the Ministry the Minister of Education has a teleconference with trustees, um, chairs of boards, and their and directors every Monday. And the latest is a consideration of extending, um, you can say, the winter um, Christmas break, or, or I don't know what you call that, winter break. Um, but it, it, we don't know that yet. It's a, it's a consideration that I don't even know if it's going to be for all school boards or sections, although it, it all has to do with a concern expressed that um, over the holidays that families are going to get together and that um, then there might be um, a, a spread of COVID. And so they're looking at extending that winter break to kind of, you know, basically if, if someone was to have symptoms of COVID that they would know that and not return to in school. So um, anyway, we're going to hear more about that. But just if you're hearing anything is to say no decisions have been made yet. I don't know if anybody has anything else to say in that section. And then we're under director trustee conference conventions out of district meetings. Everything is virtual these days. And the only thing coming up, I you know, that's quite kind of big is the age, uh, not the AGM, um, is the Ontario Public School Board PES, which everybody can attend, including uh, student uh, trustees and senators, because it's going to be free virtual. and virtual, free and virtual, and that's in January. So, next, trustee, is, you want a trustee calendar? Go ahead. Um, there's just an error when it comes on the calendar for our special education advisory committee. Our meetings start at 9.30, not 9 a.m. And it's all the way through. Thank you. Good. Thank you. And when we get more information, like um, maybe for ops, but it has the date there, but we actually have a time now, so I'll send that you know, when it starts and things like that. Okay. We're like done. Okay. Wait a minute. Last motion. That the Blue Water District School Board adjourn at 8.20 p.m. Can I have a mover? Trustee Atkinson, Trustee Boyd John, all in favor and opposed and carried and don't go off the line. So thank you. So. Tonight is Superintendent Collins' very last board meeting, and I'd like to say on behalf of the Board of Trustees, thank you very much for all service, and of course, and all the support you have provided us throughout the years, and of course, by extension to our students and of course, my parents, or our parents. <laughs> um, anyway, thank you very much, and have a great retirement, and I hear that for going, it's wonderful in the winter. <laughs> <laughs>